Shall we, uh, okay, talk to somebody, please? Um, everybody try and talk with somebody else. Uh, talk with uh, these guys behind you. Talk, talk with uh, the, pe the, the nice, nice people behind you. Okay, would anybody like to say what's going on? Who would like to, who would like to try? Who would like to try? Nobody? Should I choose somebody at random? You. Do you want to? Do you want to try? Would you like to try? No. <laughs> so okay, somebody. Uh, no, except you, uh, somebody who hasn't spoken too much. Maybe. Um, they will shout out. How about you? Uh, I don't know. I haven't worked it out. But tell me how you get there. Uh, some people are, are nodding yes. But uh, let's let's work it out. X is going to be what? Tangent. Tangent. Right. Okay. Right. So you 
end up with uh, secant squared theta d theta over uh, tangent squared plus one squared. Right? Now the tangent squared plus one is secant squared. Right? So you get secant squared. Right? So you get secant to the fourth on the bottom. Right? And so you end up with um, one over secant squared d theta. Right? That's to say cosine cosine squared theta. Right. Is is that what you did, or did you do something different? I thought there was no sign. There's no. This is a square. This is a square, not a square root. Okay. So you end up with this. Um, uh, you end up with you know cosine squared theta d theta. Right. At this point, what what do you do? We just said this a minute ago. You can you can pull out one of your uh, half angle formulas. Right? So, you, you, right? so this is going to be one half um, one half the integral of one minus no one plus one plus cosine two theta theta right okay so you get one half um, x, whoops, not x, theta, excuse me. One half theta plus um, one half sine two theta plus okay. theta over two plus sine two theta over four plus, plus c. And then you, at the end, you switch everything back, right? So remember what theta is. Theta is actually tan inverse of x, right? You have tan inverse of x, right? So you have tan inverse x um, over 2 plus the sine of 2 tan inverse x over 4 plus c. That doesn't look so. That doesn't look so nice. But you could use some trigonometric formula to to make it look nicer. But anyway, this is this is the right answer. Does anyone remember the formula for sine of two theta? Sine of two theta? I don't remember off that. Sine of two theta is one. Two sine theta, cosine theta. Is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so you know, if you wanted to make it a little bit simpler, right, then you could use that. Right? You could say, well, this is tan over two plus uh, two sine Cosine over four plus c. Right, and then you can make it a little bit. You can make it a little bit cleaner by saying that. Um, well, you say, well, look, you know, if the tangent, if the angle is is tan inverse of x. Right, then the tangent is right, you have this this sort of you have this sort of triangle. Right? And so you end up with an inverse x over two plus twice plus I'm sorry, plus a half sine of that, right? So that's gonna be x over one plus x squared times cosine, so um, uh, adjacent over
So that ends up to be an inverse over 2 plus a half x over 1 plus x squared. Plus. Any questions? Any questions? So, I mean, the main the main thing I'm trying to show you here is the is the substitution, right? This first part. You see the x squared plus one, and you think, okay, that's going to involve it'd be good because I I know that one plus tangent squared is secant squared, right? So I see this x squared, and I say, okay, I would like I'm going to take I'm going to change I'm going to take x as tangent, right? So that I can make this into, you know, secant, into secant squared, squared. Okay, and then you do from there you do your, you know, you do your substitution, and here we pull the half angle formula, and we get we get our answer. Okay. After that, it's just a matter of of, um, you know, making it a bit cleaner. Yeah. So from here from here on, I'd say it's sort of like. Just cleaning it up, making it making it look nice. But in in some sense, the important part is uh, is this first part. Okay. The, the main thing that you should be learning right now is this first part. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Yes? No? No. Okay, so let me ask, uh, let me ask you one thing. Suppose I had, um, um, suppose I had a 4 here, say. <coughs> suppose I had a 4 here. Then what do you think I should do? What kind of substitution should I make at this point? Two x, right? I would take two x to be the tangent, right? Because then I have again I have tangent squared here plus one, right? We're see that. So if I had a four here, then I would take um, <coughs> right? If I had four x squared plus one one x squared, I would take two x to be tangent theta. So that this turns into, so I get 2 dx is equal to secant squared theta d theta, right? And then this thing would turn into dx over, again, tangent squared theta plus 1 quantity squared. Right? I'm sorry. Uh, where the dx is 1 half secant squared theta d theta. Right? So I'd have to, I'd have to just have to fix it up a little bit. Right. If it's not if it's not quite so clean, then you just you know fix it up and make it make it work. Okay. So just in case it's not a perfect looking problem like this. Okay. Any questions? Let me do an, an example that's even more messed up. Um, okay, so suppose I have something like this. dy y square root of 1 plus natural log of y quantity squared. In this case, what am I going to take as my, what am I going to do? I want 1 plus tangent squared, right? So I'm going to take natural log of y is tangent, right? So, right, say, well, just let 
natural log of y be the tangent of theta, right? Then uh, differentiating, you get um, dy over y equals secant squared theta to theta. And then from there, you say, okay, so I've got my dy over y, that's great, I've got secant squared theta d theta, and I have the square root of one plus tangent squared. So, uh, right. so you end up with um, again secant squared theta over the absolute value of secant. Right. Again, we're lucky. You know, the tangent we restricted to be between negative pi over two and pi over two, so the secant is positive there. Right. So again, we get the integral of this. Theta. I'm sorry. We get the integral of secant, which we just saw was the natural log of secant theta plus tangent. Okay. Okay. And then you know, so. That's good. Maybe at this point you need to do some cleaning, right? So you get tan inverse of natural log of y, right? Where so where where theta is actually tan inverse of natural log of y, and then you put those in, and maybe you have to do some again some cleaning, but but this is basically the main thing. That's that's all. That's about all I want to show about um, about trigonometric substitutions. Okay, take a break. Take a break. Go go relax for for <coughs> five minutes. But don't don't take more than five minutes. I'm gonna start again in five minutes. Do you have a question? No. You go ahead and smoke. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is something called partial fraction decomposition. Um, 
partial fraction decomposition of rational functions. Okay, so this is a trick to, to integrate um, uh, a trick to integrate rational rational functions. <coughs> so just to re remind people, um, a rational function a rational function is a quotient of uh, polynomials. Okay, so basically, you know, anything like you could have some polynomial over some other polynomial. Right, that would be that's a rational function. Okay. Um, the, the the term rational comes from ratio, right? Ra ratio. Ratio, right? There's a ratio. There's a ratio of polynomials here. Just like for rational numbers, right? You have this rational number, right? It's a ra it's a ratio of, of numbers, a ratio of integers. <coughs> okay. Um, I should say that uh, if the degree on the top is smaller than the degree on the bottom, it's called a proper rational function, right? So this is a proper uh, rational function. Um, if the degree is the same or bigger, right, if I had x to the fifth over something like that, then this is an Im improper rational function, improper. Improper rational function. But you can always express a rational, an improper, you can always reduce the improper rational <coughs> using division. So one can, uh, so notice one can do long division uh, on improper rational functions. Okay, so, you know, if you have x to the fifth, when you divide it by x squared plus x, right, you get x cubed, x to the fifth, um, plus x to the fourth, right, negative x to the fourth, you get minus x squared, right, so negative x to the fourth minus x cubed, minus x cubed, and you get plus x cubed, right, so you get plus x one, x cubed plus x squared, negative x squared, right, so you get minus one, uh, negative x squared minus one, you get one, plus one over x squared plus x. Right, so you can, you can express your improper rational function as a polynomial plus a proper rational, right? Any, any improper rational you can express using long division as a polynomial plus a proper rational. Um, so any, any improper rational function can be expressed, can be expressed as a polynomial plus a uh, proper rational function. Okay. Just by but just by doing division. Okay. So if if, if somebody is asking you to integrate rational functions, all you need to do is to be able to integrate proper rational functions, because improper ones are just polynomials <coughs> plus rationals, plus, plus proper ones. OK, 
any any questions so far? Nothing nothing much has happened. We just have rational functions and we've split them up. We've said that, you know, we've split them into proper and improper Okay. Okay. So um uh Okay, so I'm going to make some com comments about <coughs> polynomials. Comments about polynomials. Okay. The first is this. Um, uh, uh, one. Suppose you have two polynomials. Suppose you have two polynomials, P and Q, 